Hey y'all, Super X here. Today we're going to go through a quick and simple down and dirty micro coil build. This is going to be a quick one, um, nothing too crazy about it, just a quick wrap and a quick get her done. Here I got about a 5 or 6 inch piece of 27 gauge Canthal A1 that I've torched. Um, mostly where I'm going to be building the coil. I don't really go crazy to the ends of it or anything because I leave it nice and long. Um, here I'm going to use a 16 gauge needle. I really like the 17 gauge one, but um, I'm going to use a 16 because that's close to a, what most people have in drill bits and all that. It's easy to relate to. So here we go. We're going to just put this right on here like this. I'm putting it around the back of the coil, around the back of it because I like that leg on the bottom when I install it on my RM2. And then I'm basically just going to wrap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wraps. Right there. There you go. That should do it. Now we're not going to concern ourselves too much with um just how pretty this coil is because it's going to be pretty and it's going to vape um, like a beast. You don't have to go nuts about if they're all touching and this and that. I like to do it, but trust me, if this is your first build or your last build, that is going to vape, vape you um, as much as you need. You're going to be rocking. Okay, now we're going to mount it. on the. I've got an RM2 base sitting right there. What I'm going to do is, I like to put in this one first by the juice hole. That one's usually the more tricky one for me. So I'm going to leave that leg long. I've left these really long. I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors, so I'm going to trim this one shorter. Because the one I'm going to insert second is going to be shorter. That way the long one stays in. Boom. Now all we're going to do is um, slide that long one in. Just like so. Let's see. There you go. And now we're going to slide in the short one. Boom, just like that. I already had pre-loosened my screw heads because I'm trying to save time, but there's nothing to that. Now I'm leaving the mold on, but I'm just going to take it out real quick to um, push it through this side because I like rolling with this side when I tighten. Now what I'm going to do when I put this on, again, leaving the mold in, the screws are still loose. I'm going to, um, I'm going to center it right about where the juice hole is when I'm looking down on it. Okay, once it's right about there, I'm going to make some more adjustments too, but right now I'm going to tighten the screws up on it. it. Looks like I'm getting some serious exposure issues here, so let's see if I can fix some lighting. There we go, maybe. Maybe not. Okay, one of these videos take are so long. Okay, now I'm just going to um, tighten the screws down. A little Phillips head screwdriver. Right now, again, we're just going to tighten them up. And now that they're good and tight, we're going to kind of review the scenario here. I'm going to get it to focus a little better. Okay, so now we're, we still have the proper location, which is good. So I could essentially pull this little mold out. I'm just going to push the coil over that way a little bit. And there you go. So I am going to pull the mold out right now so talking about elevation um p dip my man p dip noticed and observed and let us all know that when a coil sits high you don't get as much throat hit or wait when a coil is high you get more throat hit when it's low you don't get as much i don't like much throat hit so what i'm going to do because this is 27 gauge i could just use my finger and push it down if it was like 30 it would kind of deform the coil but 27 gauge just going to push it down a little on a little slow Nice and low in there in relation to the air hole. So that's pretty much that. I still got plenty of room on my deck beneath the coil for um, for drainage and whatnot. But I've got it kind of low so I don't get much throat hit. So that's pretty much that. Now that I've messed with the coil, I want to make sure the screws are tight. Because they tend to loosen up, especially with the heavier gauge wire. They get looser a little easier. Now let's see what this is. Maybe about one ohm. What is that? One zero. Whoa, that's a not point nine three ohm coil, which would mean if I was to vape this, 
which I'm not because I'm just doing this for y'all, I would be a sub ohm dude. A sub ohm dude, bro. And I am uh, not going to be a sub ohm dude today. So now what I'm going to do is, um, you guys will probably love it though. Most people like that. I just, I like it a little more in the 1.2-ish. It's going to put these tails straight up, legs, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to trim them even with the tops. Pretty easy stuff, especially this 27 doesn't go flying all over the place like 30 gigs does. Now, I've seen these dudes run it where they put it over the top, which is cool. I like it. I like the safety wire. I got my grips on my dirt bike that way. Um, it's, it's, it's good shit. However, I don't because I'm always messing with my screws. So, I'm always keeping them, um, tightening them and checking them every time I get in there. I tried it and it didn't work for me, but I like it. Now, I'm just going to check them again, make sure they're tight. Okay, we went down to 0.9493, it's bouncing, it's cool. Okay, so that part is done. The coil is right where I want it. Now we're gonna stick this bad boy on a mod. I'm picking this awesome VB Grand. I'll tell you why, because it's gonna be real easy for you to relate to. I'm gonna put the top on it just momentarily so I can put it in here and get it straightened out. Notice where I'm putting the air hole. I'm gonna put them down around again air hole right in front and I say front because when I um let's actually let's not even worry about the air hole first let's go back to the coil part going backwards here the coil is more important right now at this point where is it going to be on your mod you want it to be up when you vape and if your air hole is in the right place it's going to be up when you vape too I'm going to vape this this VV Grand about like this. I'm going to hit the button and I'm going to be hitting it sort of like this while I hit and putting it up to my mouth. So that means the coil is up. Alright, now that said, the air hole aligns with the coil in most cases. It's easy to check. If you look in there, let's see if we can get a shot in there. You can see the coil. It's towards the front and the air hole is kind of right there with it. It turned a little bit more but Anyway, for purposes of this demonstration, if you are vaping, you want your, your air hole ideally would want to be right there if you're vaping like with this thing pointing straight at you. But if it's right anywhere from like here to here, I would still consider that pointing up. I would say 10 to 2, 10 to 2 o'clock range, you're good to go. So now that's done, let's stick some cotton in there. What I'm going to be using, what I always use, is this stuff right here. Rolled absorbent cotton, CBS Pharmacy, sterile USP for super bitchin' wicking. Because it wicks super bitchin'. Here I've ripped off a little piece of it. I mean, it's like a mountainous lifetime supply, but I got a little piece. And I am going to use a wet bounty towel to wet my fingers. You can wet yours any way you like. Get creative. I don't, I'm not gonna be vaping it, so it don't matter to me. Now I'm just going to twist this up into a little, it, when I say dense, I mean dense in the fact that it's, it's, it's thick and it's, it's hmm, dense. That's what it is. And um, that the part I'm going to want in the coil is going to be a nice dense part that goes through the coil easy, but fills the gaps. So I'll show you about the part I'm going to try and put on my coil because I want it to be the most consistent dense part. Not a big deal. I mean, there's some forgiveness. As long as you're not too thick or way too thin, I'm going to clip off the very tip. Wet my fingers again, get this right. Now, we're going to stick it in the coil, just like that. Grab the tip. Tweezers sometimes help. There you go, it's in. It's, um, this is just a hair, hair thinner than I like. But I'm not going to vape it. I'm just doing this to give you guys an idea of how quick, simple, and dirty it is. Just a, a tiny bit more thickness. And here's the thing about cotton. If it's too thick, you can rip off a little bit and keep working. If it's too thin, just throw it away. Get you another piece and start again. Don't try scabbing it on there and stuff. It just, just ain't going to be the same. Now, I run a real small wick. I don't run a whole bunch of wick. Essentially, just about that right there. And I'm just going to tuck it down in the bowl. Again, I'm not going to vape this. I'd, I would redo that wick to make it a little bit thicker. I don't want to obstruct that juice hole at all. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell. How you can make a quick, down and dirty micro coil. Now the squonking action. Again, we're just going to give the bottle a little press. And we're going to fill up. Fill the bowl. Let it well up. 
let it um, soak up some. Cotton doesn't taste too good the first few hits, but after the first few hits, it is game on. So that's pretty much it. Before I put the top on again, I would just check this, that the screws are still tight. My Addy is not tight because I didn't put my O-ring in or anything. I just did this for demonstration. But anyway, you can see you can build a micro coil that is damn jamming. You don't have to go crazy with squeezing it. You can if you want, if you like to, but this is going to vape like a champ. Um, knock your dick in the dirt like we would used to want to always say. Anyhow, there you go. The shit that killed Elvis. Super X. Rapid micro coil. Making technique. See ya.